does for me. It told me how much I am loved, sweet and tenderly. With a grateful heart, I read each line of God's will for me. It was written by a nail scarred man at Calvary. Oh, how the soul of ladder spoke to my heart and soul. I was captured by Thank you. And he's the one we need to count on. We're so thankful we could come together. We want to turn to Ephesians chapter 4 in your Bible. And I think there's about 32 verses. We'd like to read the entire chapter and pick out some of the things along the way. Brother Steve, we've got some materials for you. In the, uh, in the bulletin, you have a tremendous outline on this particular chapter. Ephesians 4 by uh, Warren Wearsby. There's a tremendous outline, and four points he gives here is, first of all, Ephesians. The main idea in these first 16 verses is the unity of the believer in Christ. And so it says, first of all, the grace of unity. Talking about the unity of God's people coming together to one accord and one purpose. Then number two, the ground of unity. That's four through six. We're talking about one body, one spirit, one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, even the Father. On the back side, you have the third point of emphasis. It goes from chapter 4, 7 through 11. And these are some of the things that are pointed out. The gifts of unity. And uh, it comes right on down. He gave at least five types of spiritual gifts. He gave apostles. He gave prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. And then the uh, fourth thing, the growth of unity. So these four points are tremendous. It gives a complete outline uh, of this particular chapter. And it will be a blessing to you. The grace of unity, the ground of unity, the gifts of unity, and the growth of unity. You have that to uh, read along and compare with the Word of God. But right now we're going to take the Scripture and just go through these verses and point out a few things and just lift them up. And as we go to uh, Ephesians chapter 4, beginning with verse 1. And therefore the prisoner, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love. There's one of that word that we mentioned, to be able to forbear. Uh, it has to do with kind of a meekness. Uh, meekness is not weakness. 
but it's a strength held in, in check by the power of the power of God. And so it says, verse three, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. That's what God wants for us. He wants us to be a, a walk worthy of the location, the calling whereby God has called us. Uh, we've been called out of darkness into God's marvelous light. We were once under the condemnation, the separation, the damnation of the sin principle. And then Jesus Christ came, redeemed us. And then we'll find here the, that a new creation. We're a new creature, new create, we're, new create, we're a new creation. We're once under the domination and, and uh, the power of sin's power. And we'll find as we read about this, about the old man, the new man, you'll find that uh, in a number of the, the books of the Bible, we find that Saul of Tarsus, who later became Paul the Apostle, God anointed him and gave him, as we say from time to time, 14 books that he was able to write. It's over half of the New Testament, but he's a Johnny come lately. And so we find that he gave, and he wrote the book of Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, the book of Hebrews. Now all these books of the Bible kind of repeat themselves. And you go to the church at Rome, you're gonna find that he talks about uh, putting off the old man. You go to the book of Ephesians, we're going to read here about putting off the old man. You go to Colossians about putting off the old man, the new man. So he repeats himself. <laughs> and so I tell our people, I don't repent much, but I do a lot of repeating. <laughs> and some things need to be repeated, as we find here in the scripture. So let's continue reading. We'll go ahead and, and uh, read as we look at chapter 4, uh, verse 4. There is one body. One spirit, the Holy Spirit, even as you are called, and one hope of your calling. Uh, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one, uh, one God, the Father all, who is above all, and through all, and you all, in you all. So here we have uh, the seven unities uh, to be kept. One body, one Holy Spirit, and uh, one hope, uh, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. That baptism, we find... Uh, is mainly talking about there's the doctrine of baptisms. There's more than one baptism in Scripture, but the one that really he's emphasizing in this particular church and in this particular letter is being baptized by the Holy Spirit. And we find that when you receive Christ as your Savior, you've been baptized or immersed into the body of Christ, the true church. And that's what we call the universal church. So everyone, no matter where we come from, the color of our skins, if you receive Christ, uh, as your Savior in this dispensation of period of time where God is working man, uh, among mankind, we find that uh, you've been immersed and baptized into the body of Christ, the true church, the living. And then you need, as we said last Sunday and last Wednesday, you need to belong to a local church where you have pastors and deacons and fellow laborers. And the Bible says we're laborers together with God, we're workers together with Him. We are His ambassadors. Uh, we're His witnesses, and we find here uh, uh, you... You shall be witnesses unto me. He not only spoke that to his disciples that he was with, but also to us who are his disciples and followers. And you shall you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem. Now Jerusalem is where you live and where you are. That's your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister. Those are your circle of influence. So you start there where you are and you move out into other areas, into uh, Judea, surround Samaria. Now Samaria was where they, they, they had half-breeds there. Half Jew, half, half Gentile. And the Jews, for the most part, didn't even want to go to Samaria. They would bypass that place because they were so uh, prejudiced. And so when you come to Christ, the prejudice barriers comes down. And uh, we thank God for that. So we need to understand that, that uh, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, Father of all. Come to uh, verse 7. But every one of us is given grace. I like that. Uh, grace is a gift. Grace is God's unmerited favor. And uh, we've memorized a lot of verses on grace. What we started off with this morning, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Whatever your need might be today, your God is concerned about that need. He knows about it. And so you need to, to focus on calling upon him. And uh, a lot, of, a lot of verses on grace. For by grace are we saved through faith, that not of ourselves. It's the gift of God. Grace is a gift. And uh, it says right here in this verse, if you'll notice. Verse 7. 
but to every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Now all of us are scale one to 10. Some of you haven't been saved very long. Some of you have been saved for many years and uh, it goes on up. But uh, there's a process and a progress of growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a process of growing in that. And we'll get on here and say, uh, don't, don't, no more children. Don't just keep being a child. Don't, be, don't stay in the cradle row or in the nursery department. No more children, but let us grow up. Now we're going to find this right here in these verses. No more children. Sometimes, uh, my wife says, sometimes you're very childish. And I said, well, honey, I haven't got my first childhood yet. My, my, my first childhood yet. I enjoy it. I love it too much. But we become childish and childlike. And he says, move on in your maturity and your growth and your development. If you have a baby and that baby stays there after five or six, seven, eight years, still a baby, that type of mode, that's not a healthy... And it's a process of God's people growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now, where does grace come from? It comes from God. Uh, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich yet for our sakes he became poor that we through his poverty might be made rich we're rich in the bounty and blessings of God and God knows our needs and God's concerned about our needs what they are today what they may be tomorrow if there is a tomorrow and he knows those things but he wants to supply uh, but no more verse 8 wherefore he said when he ascended up on high he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men he give, everyone else has a gift, uh, talents or abilities, but wherewithal. And God wants us to know the gifts that God gives to them, be, uh, be aware of them, and uh, uh, help them to mature and grow and develop these uh, gifts that God gives to you. Sometimes we stop and say, well, I've done my part. I've got older now. I'm just going to sit on the sideline. No, we, we don't want to sit on the sideline. You want to keep serving your Lord until the day you die or until the day Jesus Christ comes and receives us by the glory. So stay busy, stay active uh, in the word of God, the ways of God, the service of God. And that's one of the places you'll find peace and joy. Uh, you'll never be content. You'll never be satisfied. You'll never be happy unless you are doing what God has designed you to do. And that's to worship God, to serve God, and to love him. And uh, if you don't do that, you'll never be fulfilled. And the word of God affects all of our being, our body, our soul, and spirit. And so all these parts of your body, uh, the body parts, the physical body, gives you contact with the world. Your soul gives you self-consciousness, uh, contact with self and understanding your emotions, your feelings. And then uh, the other is uh, uh, the mind, will, and emotion. So you've got three parts, your body, your soul, and your spirit. God is a spirit, and they who worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Uh, when we come into this world, we're spiritually dead, as we found in these other chapters. But when you come to Christ, you, you are made alive in Christ by receiving Christ as your Savior. As we look at the Adamic nature, the old nature, the old man, uh, we still drag him around with us, the new man created Christ. We'll find these right here, and these things are repeat. We're going to show you where they're repeated in the book of Romans, the book of Colossians, and here in the book of Ephesians. God repeats himself. And he does that because he's speaking to different people at different intervals. And each of them need to be reminded. We forget. We get lax. We get, lax, we get lazy. Uh, we, we, get, we fall short. And so he, 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 he's I'm going to stir you up, says the Apostle Peter. I'm going to stir you up by way of remembrance, of remembering things, because we do forget. And we get careless. So we come on down to uh, now, either descending or in Sema. And first, in the lower part, the lower parts of the earth. Now, if you were to go to, we're not giving to one, over in Matthew 12, 40, the Bible says that hell is in the heart of the earth. Now, the heart of the earth, you, you take the earth and the heart of it, that's where hell is. I know where hell is, or Hades. But also it talks about he descended into the heart of the earth, uh, into the lower parts of the earth. And he ascended and he uh, when he went there, his soul and spirit, as we said before, one compartment was for the saved people, one compartment was for the lost people. There was a great gulf fix. And so he, he, he descended, and uh, his body and soul was on, his body was on the, on, the, on the tree. He told the thief, as we said last Sunday, this day you shall be within paradise. And when Jesus and the thief died, 
they went to the save compartment there. And the other thief died, he went to the hell apartment, which is a place of pain and suffering. And so he that, he that descended is also the one ascended and went above the heavens, above where the birds fly, that's the first heaven, and then the stars and the moon and the clouds, that's the second heaven. But the third heaven is above and beyond that, and that's where they ascend. That's where, the, that's where paradise is. I know where hell is right now, it's still there. That compartment that we're, and uh, the people are screaming and crying, wanting people to come to put water on their tongue. They're tormented in the flame, day and night, day and night. But then one day in God's time, uh, point in time, we find that he will actually take hell itself and those in that uh, hell section where it's burning, he's gonna cast them into what is the lake of fire, which is called the second death. And will be tormented day and night forever and ever and ever. And so when we think of that, we think about our loved ones and even this Mexican fellow that's working with us or whoever you might come across. Can we win them to Jesus? Can we give them the word of God? But then sometimes you give them the word of God, they don't want it. They don't want to hear it. And so all we can do is deliver it to them, give it to them, and share it with them. And I even, so he was out there working, I, and I didn't know that. And Steve, Steve I told me, you can't be working on Sunday. So I come down and said, listen, Joseph, well, why don't you just come on? He said, I'm dirty. And I said, are you a Christian? He said, well, listen, I don't, I don't follow that. So the man needs the Lord, and you, you come across people like this from time to time. They need Jesus. Not just know about him, know of him, but they need to know him as their personal savior. They become a new creature in Christ, a new creation. And then a process of growing. No more staying a child or a baby, but moving on to maturity. That we may grow up, and we'll find this in just a few moments. Come on down to uh, the next verse. Um, uh, verse 11. And he gave some apostles, he gave some prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. For what purpose? For the perfecting of the saints. For maturing and growing and developing of the saints. For the work of the ministry. And for the edification of the body of Christ. Edifying, building people up, not tearing them down. And then we come to verse uh, 13. Till we all come to the unity of this faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect, mature man, unto the measure, statue of the fullness of Christ. Verse 14. That we henceforth be no more what? Be no more children. No more children. Tossed about to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to see. But speak the truth in love, may grow up. I find the word, no more children, but you may grow up. Begin to develop, but you'll never develop, you'll never grow. If you don't, you must get the word of God in you. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing with the word of God. You gotta hear it, you gotta, you gotta see it, you gotta meditate. You ever seen a cow chewing the cud? That same way, we not only know the word, but begin to memorize it, meditate upon it day and night. And that, that's where the blessings come. That's where your growth comes. That's where your maturity comes. But if you never read the Bible, never take time to read the scripture, never time to go to a place where you can hear the scripture, that's where your faith is developed and grow and mature. And so no more children may grow up. God wants us to grow up. And uh, he says here, verse 15, but speak the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. Verse 16, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted, and which every point supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto edifying itself in love. Now we we'll come to verse 17. Again, it's all that word walk. walk. Uh, we're to walk. And then start off with it with a walk. It says, walk worthy of the, your vocation. That's verse 1, 4, 1. Look what it says here. Verse 17 says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles. <coughs> These two people who are unsaved, don't walk, don't, don't conduct yourself in their manner of life and living. He says, verse 17, walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of of their mind. I, I put down no more vanity of their mind. There's, 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 there's no value. Verse 18. Having the understanding darkened, alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Verse 19. Who being past feeling, they've been cauterized, 
bad feeling, have given themselves over to lasciviousness. The word lasciviousness is unbridled passion. That deals with uh, immorality, sexuality. Uh, no. To walk, to work all uncleanness and with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. There's eight things there he mentions, uh, kind of illustrating the lifestyle we once had and were in the Adamic nature control situation of the old man. But he comes on to the old man and new man in a few moments. And he says that you put these things on. Look what he says here now. He says, uh, verse 20, but you have not so learned Christ. If so be that you have heard of him and have been taught, you've been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you may put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Now let me give you a few verses here uh, where you find the old man and the new man. I have them here somewhere, let's see. You want to make sure that you, you look at these. They're, they're tremendous as we see the old man, the new man relationship. And so here in, in the old man, the new man situation, we find it in the, I'm going to read, the, read over here in uh, Romans chapter 6. Now, if you want to take your Bible, hold your place there as we close out Ephesians 4, but turn to Romans chapter 6 for just a moment, if you would. Romans chapter 6. Verse 6 is the key verse. Romans 6, knowing this, that our old man, the old man, is crucified with Christ, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Uh, come on down now uh, to uh, verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Verse 13. Neither yield your members as instruments of righteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves, this is Romans, unto God as those that have been alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Verse 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you. You're not under the law, but under grace. So we find that this book of Ephesians talks about the old man. I want to give you another place if you'll turn there with me. It's over in Colossians. Colossians chapter, chapter 3. In Colossians chapter 3, we're going to look at the old man and the new man again. And uh, very interesting. The old man, look at Colossians chapter chapter 3. That's just back a few, few places from chapter 4. It says in verse 5, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. That means your hands, your feet, your eyes, your ears, your whole body parts. Mortify. The word mortify, consider dead. Because a part of you... They're very active. They want to do things that's wrong. You want to see things that you shouldn't see, hear things you shouldn't hear. Let your tongue say things you shouldn't say. So these different members of our body, we're to yield them. Mortify, therefore, the members of which are fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is an idolatry, or which things is the wrath of God come upon the children of disobedience, in the which also you walk sometimes when you lived in them, Verse 8, but now you put off all those things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing you put off the old man, verse 9, with his deeds, and put on the new man, old man, new man. You see, the new man, it says this, put on the new man, what's this? Which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. We want to find out this here, something, go back to chapter 4 now. Uh, in Colossians chapter 4. We talked about the old man in Colossians uh, chapter, or excuse me, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. You see how chap the book of Colossians, the book of Romans, the book of Ephesians overlap. Old man, new man. Uh, I've heard that before. No, you didn't hear it, you didn't hear it from uh, the book of Romans. I, I, oh, you told about, no, you didn't hear it about in the book of Colossians. You see, sometimes you may hear about the old man new man, but you haven't heard of what the Spirit of God had Paul to write to these people in Rome, the people at Colossae, the people at Ephesus. And we're seeing what he's saying about over in, in the book of Ephesus. Uh, Ephesians, turn there with me now. Chapter 4. He tells us here. He says you to put off the old man. Now it comes on down to uh, uh, verse 22.
that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt, corrupt, spoiled, putrid. And that, listen, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's Romans 12, 1 and 2. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind, your thinking process. I beseech thee, for brother, What's that verse? Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech thee, for brother, by the mercy, mercy of God, you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is the will of God. And be not conformed to this world, but be, by, be you renewed in the spirit of your mind. Two times. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind, your process, your thinking process. Very important. If you just dwell on things that are bad and, and think about that, just keep thinking about, well, I've had a bad day and my house burned down and, and I just lost my job. And I just, you, you don't, don't, don't stay there. Don't stay there. Get up out of that, that mode of, 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 we all go there. We have our time there. But this is like Job. He says, listen. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. There's always something we can see to be grateful for. If you look close enough and hard enough. So he says here, in this place here about the old man, the new man. Verse 24. He says, and that you put on the new man, which after God has created righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore put away lying, speak every one ever truth with your neighbor. For we're members of one another. Be ye angry and sin not. Be angry and sin not. Can I be angry and sin not? Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Deal with it. Neither give place to the devil. The way place hop off. You give him ground, he'll take ground. He'll build uh, fortifications there. Verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more. Do you, are, you, are you a thief? Have you ever stolen anything? Uh, those that rob God and tithes and offer that they, they're stealing from God so uh, have I been there probably have he let him that stole steal no more but rather let him labor working with his hands the things which is good that he may give to him that needeth being able to share and help those verse 29 let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good, the use of edifying, that may minister grace to the hearers. My mouth gets me in trouble more times than I'd like to admit. What comes out of our mouth? Thinking process. We are what we think. Be careful. It says this, very close. Let no corrupt communication. Verse 29. Over here in verse 29, I had it amplified. I thought it was very interesting. Verse 29 says this. Let no foul or polluted language, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth, but only speech as is good and benefit to the spiritual uh, helping others, as is fitting to the need and occasion that it may minister grace favor to those who hear it and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God make him sad verse 30 and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby you're sealed on the day of redemption we're saved in the hand of God the hand of Christ we're sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise the seal represents a finished transaction it, it, it's a it's a not only a finished transaction it, 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 it represents security Ownership. Verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, evil speaking, be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. God wants us to have a forgiving heart, a heart that would quick to judge your own sin, confess it to God by God's grace. I want to confess it or forsake it. Say, God, my thought life, my attitude, my spirit, help me to be, help me to be motivated and led by the Spirit of God that I might be what you want me to be, what you designed me to be. I'm your, I'm your new creature in Christ. I'm a child of yours. Help me to walk in the light as you're in the light that we might be a witness and a testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
We're so glad we could come today and hear this beautiful singing. The testimonies in song. We go through this book of Ephesians and compare it with the book of Romans, the book of Colossians, as God repeats himself about the old man, the new man life. Put off that old man. Get off those old grave clothes and put on the new man that people see Jesus in your life, your conduct, your countenance, the way you walk, the way you talk. That's what God wants out of every one of us. It's not easy. You've got to work at that. Work at it. I believe that's what it says, work out your own salvation. We're not working to be saved, not working to stay saved, but the work because God is working in us if you're allowed to do that. Because your body is His temple. We're bought with a price. We're not our own. We're His property. Everything we have belongs to Him. He just wants you to give back your time. Give back your treasure. Let God use these things that He's put within your care. How many of you are glad to be saved? Raise your hand. How many of you are glad to go to heaven and say, Praise God? Praise, Praise God. God. We're so glad you we're so glad you could come today and hear some of the things you've heard before. You know these things, but it, we, we need to be reminded of these. That the Spirit of God once again might somehow stir us by way of remembrance of hearing these things we've already heard time and time again. But it needs to be reiterated, it needs to be repeated. And we thank God for that.